All right, here's the third question from the 2021 AP Physics 1 exam. As usual, any, uh, any corrections will be in the description or comments below. A student of mass MS is standing on a smooth surface, uses a stick to push a disc of mass MD. The student exerts a constant horizontal force of magnitude FH over time for the interval 0 to TF while pushing the disc. Assume there's a negligible friction. So, so he's on a smooth surface, he pushes a disc, uh, while pushing the disc, assume there's negligible friction. So he's going to push on this disc basically. It's and he's it's pretty smooth, no friction. Yeah, negligible friction. Assuming the disc begins at rest, determine the expression for the final speed of the disc relative to the surface. Okay, so he's going to do a constant force over time, which means he's going to exert an impulse, right? And so what is his impulse? Impulse is force times the time. In this case, F H times TF minus T0, which is just TF. That impulse is going to cause a, a change in momentum. I usually write it as change in P, but um, we would be doing, um, we would say the mass of the disk um, and is going to change the velocity. He's going to start with no velocity and end with um, a final velocity of VF, VD, sorry, VD. So we would have this is equal to that, and they want you to find VD. So VD is just simply the impulse divided by MD. Okay. So this is impulse momentum. He's a, the guy's exerting an impulse on it. It's the only total force on it over time that's causing a change in momentum. Okay. Assuming there's negligible friction between the student's shoes and the surface, after time tf, the student slides with speed vs. Derive an equation, equation for the ratio of vd to vs and express your answer in terms of ms, md, and physical constants. Okay, so now a couple ways you can do this. You could do conservation of momentum, or you could say equal and opposite. The disc must have exerted an equal and opposite impulse on the person. So the student feels the same impulse just in the opposite direction. So he sees the feels the same input, input f, f, h, t, f, but that then applies to ms times his vs, okay? So his vs is equal to fhtf over ms, because he exerts the same impulse. And therefore, you can um, do the ratio. What is vd over vs? Well, vd is this. And this is vs. These are going to cancel, and then you just flip that guy. It's ms over md. Okay. You could have done conservation momentum, but either way, you should set vs is equal to this. Maybe with the negative sign, but we're just trying to find the speed, so we don't really care about the sign or the direction in that case. Okay. Um, and let's see if this makes makes sense. So the bigger the student is. The, the, the larger the ratio that this 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 ratio would occur um, which means like like if he's like if he's like a tank and he pushes then his VS is gonna be very very tiny and this ratio is gonna be huge right so that that, that makes kind of physical sense there assume the student's mass is greater than that of the disk on the grid below sketch graphs of the speeds of both the student and the disk as a function of time Again, the speeds, not the velocity, speed. So we don't care about the direction. Even though momentum is a directional quantity, when you do conservational momentum, you have to consider ve velocity, not speed. But we're just going to plot only positive values between 0 and 2 TF. So not just 1 TF, but 2 times the final, the, when, the, so when he's done applying the impulse. Assume that neither the disk nor the student collide with anything after T equals TF on the vertical axis line of VD and VS. So if he's doing a constant force during that motion, his change in velocity is constant. And so you would expect like for the, um, so MS is greater than MD. So let's do the, we'll do the, um, the disc first. We'll say he'll go up linearly as the impulse is implied. And then he's just going to coast freely at the same speed after there. So this would be VD, the, the disc. Oh, actually the disc is going to move faster. So let's call this VS actually because um, I want the I'll want the student uh, I want the disk to be higher and I didn't want to draw a small glass okay so then um, 
you don't know exactly how much more, just that MS is greater than MD, so the disc is definitely going to be more. Uh, I'm going to just put them, like, exaggerate them higher up a little bit, because the student is probably a lot bigger than a disc, realistically. And so this is the disc. So, and then this ratio would be the ratio of their masses, like we just talked about. Okay. The disc is now moving at constant speed V1 on the surface towards a block of mass MB, which is at rest on the surface as shown above. The disc and block collide head on and stick together, and the center of mass of the disc block system moves with speed VCM. Suppose the mass of the disc is much greater than that of the block. So the disc is really big. Think of like a bowling ball, and the block is like an ant that's not going to get squished. Estimate the velocity of the center of mass of the disc block system. So if a bowling ball hits an ant, it's not going to slow down. It's going to move at the same speed. So we're going to say that the... Um, the do, do, decimate, well, center of mass is going to be approximately equal to v1 because with a very large disk the impulse on the disk from the block uh, impulse uh, you could do conservation of momentum you could uh, but but the impulse on the disk from the block is negligible compared to compared to its mass which means that um, delta v is small remember we're talking about f impulse equals m delta v and so when you divide by a very large mass this delta v is very small okay Suppose the mass of the disk is much less than the mass of the block. So say now it's reversed. I throw a little pebble at a bowling ball. Estimate the velocity of center mass of the disk ball system. It's going to be very small. Approximately zero. If I have a little pebble, hit a bowling ball, and you know they're, 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 it's so, so frictionless that it will move. It will move a little bit very slowly. And again, the same thing happens is the impulse on the large block is very tiny. Compared to the compared to its mass, um, I don't know if I would write these exactly. I'm just trying to give you guys answers. I'm explaining more like kind of what I'm thinking, but those are kind of how my estimates. Um, now suppose that neither neither object's mass is much greater than the other, but that they are not necessarily equal. Derive an equation for velocity cm. So now we do now we're gonna do conservation of momentum. So this guy has um, m of the disk he's moving v1 and then this is the mass of the block and then together they move together at a new speed vcm and this is mb plus md so we just want to say this is the before collision this is the after collision we do conservation of momentum we would say the momentum of the system before is md v1 has to equal mb plus md VCM and uh, you can solve for VCM consider the scenario in part one where the mass of the disk where MD is much greater than the mass of the block does your equation agree we would say yes because if MD is much bigger than than MB then this is this this the denominator here we would say that MB plus MD is approximately equal to MD for small for very small m, or for for for, for MD much greater than MB, right? Because this thing this is going to be basically zero or negligible compared to that. So your VCM is equal to uh, MD or approximately equal to MD V1 over MD, which is equal to V1. So that's an explanation for where that comes from. And um, did I miss a part? Let me see. Uh, does your equation for VCM part C3 agree with your reasoning for part C1? And I would say yes. Oh, OK. They didn't want you to do the other, other way around. They just want you to do that one. OK, I didn't miss anything there. OK, that's it.